Hi there. This is 165 East 95th Street. Just the place. Excuse me, sir. It's just the place that I was. Watch your step. Oh. <laughs> just the place that I was looking for. Boy, it's hard to move, isn't it? Hiya, Snoopy. Hard to watch all of your favorite things packed up into big brown boxes that disappear into a moving van. Hard to believe they'll all show up again soon, safe and sound, in your new room. But they will. I guess everybody who's ever moved knows that jittery kind of liberty jibberty feeling you get right here. The feeling that you can't wait to get started, and the feeling that you're not quite ready to leave. Well, even if you've never moved, you've probably had almost the same feeling. When moving on to a new classroom and a new teacher, said goodbye to an old friend, or even gone away on a summer vacation and left your friends behind. Well, this book, Gila Monsters Meet You at the Airport, tells the story of a little boy who used to live right here in this very building, then moved away with his parents. So whether you've moved or you might, or whether you're just waiting to make friends with a new kid on the block, I think there's something here for you. Hilo Monsters meet you at the airport by Marjorie Weinman Charming. Pictures by Byron Barton. I live at 165 East 95th Street, New York City, and I'm going to stay here forever. My mother and father are moving out west. They say I have to go too. They say I can't stay here forever. Out west, Nobody plays baseball because they're too busy chasing buffaloes. And there's cactus everywhere you look. But if you don't look, you have to stand up just as soon as you sit down. At West, it takes 15 minutes just to say hello. Like this. How? Partner. Out west, I'll look silly all the time. I'll have to wear chaps and spurs and a bandana. And a hat so big that nobody can find me underneath it. <laughs> and I'll have to ride a horse to school every day. And I don't know how. Out west, Everybody grows up to be a sheriff. I want to be a subway driver. <coughs> My best friend is Seymour, and we like to eat salami sandwiches together. Out west, I probably won't have any friends. But if I do, they'll be named Tex or Slim. I'm only chili and beans for breakfast and lunch and dinner. Well, I miss Seymour and Salami. I'm on my way out west. It's cool in the airplane. The desert is so hot you can collapse. And then the buzzard circled overhead. But no one rescues you because it's real life and not the movies. There are clouds out the window. No buzzards yet. I'm looking at a map. Before, whenever I looked at a map, I always knew my house was on the right. But no more. Now I'm in the middle of that map, and I'm going left, left, out west. Seymour says there are Gila monsters and horned toads out west. And I read it in the book, so I know it's so. But Seymour says they meet you at the airport. <laughs> We're here, out west. I don't know what a Gila monster or horned toad looks like, but I don't think I see any at the airport. Cactus Airlines Flight 9, departing for back east. I see a boy in a cowboy hat. He looks like Seymour, but I know his name is Tex. Hi, I say. Hi, he says. I'm moving east. 
great, I say. Great, he says. What's so great about it? Don't you know that the streets are full of gangsters? They all wear flowers in their lapels so they look honest. But they zoom around in big cars with screeching brakes. You have to jump out of their way. In the east, it snows and blows all the time. Except for five minutes when it's spring and summer. And you have to live on the 50th floor. Airplanes fly through your bedroom, and you've got to duck back. They ran out of extra space in the east a long time ago. It's so crowded. People sit on top of each other when they ride to work. And alligators live in the sewers. I've read it in a book, so I know it's so. <sighs> then the mother and father of the boy, who looks like Seymour, but isn't, grabs his hand and he goes off. Sometimes the alligators get out, he yells to me, and they wait for you at the airport. It's warm, but there's a nice breeze. We're in a taxi riding to our new house. No horses yet. I don't see any buffalo stampedes either. I see a restaurant just like the one in my old neighborhood. I see some kids playing baseball. I see a horse. Hey, that's a great looking horse. I'm going to ask my mother and father for one like it. Here's our house. Some kids are riding their bikes in front of it. I hope one of them is named Slim. Tomorrow, I'm writing a long letter to Seymour. I'll tell him I'm sending it by Pony Express. Seymour will believe me. Back east, they don't know much about us Westerners. <laughs>
Gila monsters really aren't as big as people think they are. As you can see, they're only about one and a half feet long. Hi, I'm Lauren Kepner, and I'm a biologist with the Arizona Game and Fish Department. As you can see, the Gila monster really isn't a monster at all, although it is larger than most of the lizards you'll find in the desert. You can see it's really well adapted for the desert. You can look at its skin. It's hard and beady and really tough really rough to the touch. If we can get him to stick out his tongue, you'd see that his tongue's forked, and that helps him taste the air. But if we turn him over, you can see the scales on his belly are a lot different. They're real smooth. They're not round, they're sort of square-shaped. 